All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some West Texas supercell madness that is expected today, bringing some very large hail and a few tornadoes at least to West Texas, and then that threat of severe weather shifts to Kansas and Oklahoma along the I-35 corridor tomorrow, where significant tornadoes are going to be possible from Oklahoma City northward towards Wichita. If you guys do find this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so that you don't miss updates when they come from me. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. Let's get right into it. First off, we are taking a look at our Storm Prediction Center's outlook for today and tonight. They've issued a broad enhanced risk of severe weather across central and west Texas and extreme eastern New Mexico. This means that severe thunderstorms are going to be likely. We're looking at areas from Amarillo southward towards the southwest Texas and Mexico border here where severe storms are expected. And we could get a little bit of severe weather activity along the Red River northeastward towards the Oklahoma City region later on tonight. But the main threat is looking like this afternoon and evening. So a few tornadoes at least are going to be possible here. We have a 5% chance of a tornado touchdown within 25 miles of any given location across this broad brown area. Area here. So even though that doesn't sound like a lot, we still got to take it seriously, especially given that tornadoes obviously aren't the most common thing, uh, but supercells are going to be possible, potentially several supercells, and some of those could produce tornadoes as far eastward as the DFW area. So we do have to keep an eye on that today. The primary threat today, though, is going to be large hail. Not only are we expecting several reports of large hail in this red area especially, but we could be looking at significant hail in this black hash area. We're looking at the possibility of hail lime to softball size that is going to be possible today. Enough hail to cause some serious problems uh, if it does end up hitting objects there. So we do got to keep an eye on that for sure. Very large destructive hail is a possibility today. Another thing that is going to be possible is scattered to numerous damaging wind gusts with the most concentrated area across southwest Texas. Let's see what these storms are going to be looking like. And we're speeding this up to 5 p.m. Central Time, which I'm hoping is going to be right around the time that this video goes up, if not a little bit after. And we're likely to have widespread supercells here across eastern New Mexico and into southwest Texas that we do need to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at those ingredients that are in play. First off, our dew points. Right now, we're not seeing a lot of north northward moisture advection in those dew points towards the DFW area. But we do have some low to mid-60s dew points across west Texas out ahead of those advancing storms here. You have a couple storms closer to the dry line in eastern New Mexico and there is enough moisture to get the job done. We also have some pretty good instability in the area. The higher K values that we see indicate that there's more thermodynamic energy for the storms to work with if they can get going. Usually values over a thousand are definitely going to be favorable for severe weather. So the higher values that we see, typically the more unstable the environment is, uh, generally speaking. K values between two and three thousand are going to be possible with it kind of stopping once you get towards the DFW area, but it will get more moist in that environment as the evening goes on. Right now, though, along the dry line, the environment um, does look to be pretty unstable. So let's take a look at that bulk shear. Our 0 to 6 kilometer bulk shear the typical, usually the stronger values that we see on the screen are going to indicate increased rotation in the atmosphere, and that increased rotation could help supercells organize and develop here. Usually values in these uh, pinks and reds are going to be especially favorable for supercell organization if the right thermodynamics are there, and this is in place across West Texas and Eastern New Mexico where we see the stronger shear values combining with that instability, so it is definitely possible to see scattered to numerous supercells at this point. Again, here's what these storms look like. These will push eastward. We're taking this every couple of hours. Supercell activity does wane as we get into the evening. And then after we get into the after dark period here, the severe weather threat is probably going to decrease dramatically. I don't expect much severe weather al al along the uh, Red River here. And the reason being because we don't see a lot of moisture advection in those regions. We don't see a ton of instability after dark. So I don't expect too much up there. But I am thinking that eastern New Mexico into western Texas here uh, in the lesser populated areas is probably 
going to be where we see the most substantial severe weather activity today. This also comes with the cost in terms of heavy rainfall. We could be looking at a couple instances of flash flooding across this green shaded region. And then that threat of severe weather is going to shift towards especially Kansas and Oklahoma for tomorrow, but this also stretches into Missouri and Arkansas as well. So we have a day two enhanced risk of severe weather that has been issued here in this orange region where severe storms are likely, including the I-35 corridor from Oklahoma City towards Wichita, eastward towards Tulsa, into southwestern Missouri and northwestern Arkansas. We do need to keep an eye on numerous severe thunderstorms expected tomorrow. The slight risk area, you could still be getting some severe weather, pretty solid shot of it. However, I do think that as you get further south into central Oklahoma and then into north Texas for the afternoon and evening, uh, the discrete development of storms is going to be pretty questionable down there, but you will ultimately see a squall line in those region, at, it appears, as we get later into the overnight hours. Now, breaking down those individual threats, there's not only the possibility of at least seeing a few tornadoes tomorrow, if not several tornadoes, but we also have the chance of seeing significant tornadoes here. So this entire yellow region, which would prompt an enhanced risk of its own, has this black hatched area around it here. This means that we could be looking at significant tornadoes, EF2 or greater. So those are the tornadoes that cause particularly dangerous damage here, uh, and that's going to be possible, again, along the I-35 corridor especially, but this puts areas like Oklahoma City and Wichita at risk. The areas that were impacted by that bad tornado east of Wichita a couple of days ago are going to be another region that sees uh, impacts possibly near that for tomorrow as well. Doesn't mean that we're going to see another tornado like that in that specific area. And another thing that Ryan Hall, y'all, said is, yeah, there's a 10% chance of a tornado touchdown. He said this for the last event. There's a 10% chance of a tornado touchdown, but there's also a 90% chance that you're not going to get a tornado. So you need to put those factors into play still. So basically, even though the chance is enhanced to see tornadoes in the area, it's not a guarantee, and this is to prepare you, not to scare you. But it is definitely possible that we see tornadic activity tomorrow. Now, large hail is also going to be a possibility. Numerous large hailstones are expected and a couple of those could exceed lime size. Damaging winds are also likely with the most concentrated area for damaging winds across southeastern Kansas, northeast Oklahoma, northwest Arkansas, and southwest Missouri, where we see a bit of a squall line organizing later on in the evening. Let's see what these storms are going to look like, and we are speeding this up to 6 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. We're going to have a sharpening dry line here across western Oklahoma into west Texas and southwestern uh, Kansas, and out ahead of that dry line, dew points are screaming into the upper 60s and low 70s. So we have a well-developed warm sector here. It's also, again, going to be quite unstable. Here's those instability values. Looking at Cape Invection here of 2,000 to 4,000 across North Texas and into Oklahoma. Definitely very unstable. Now, we do have some thunderstorms that the NAM model here is trying to show across northern Oklahoma and then into central Kansas as well. Right now, a lot of this activity is discrete, or at least semi-discrete, which means the storms are, are off on their own. They're more of a cellular mode. They're not congealed into a big squall line. And basically what that's going to mean is that the storms will be able to utilize the ingredients in the environment a lot easier and become significant severe weather producers. If we see storms that are all combined into a line, you could still get substantial severe weather with it, especially with wind damage. But in terms of tornadic activity and other factors, there may be a lesser chance of supercell organization for those kind of storms because all the storms are fighting each other to get the, good, to get the proper ingredients. But but if you have storms that are isolated, kind of like this, they're going to be able to use those ingredients to their advantage. And that's not a good sign. These storms are going to even be a little bit more discreet further to the west a couple hours beforehand. It's looking like by about 3 or 4 p.m. Central tomorrow is when we're going to see storm initiation, according to this model here. And that will likely start as supercellular, still looking supercellular at this point. And then as we get later on into the evening, that's when it congeals into a squall line. Let's take a look at these low-level winds here. The stronger low-level winds that we are going to see are going to potentially indicate an increased environment for tornadoes to touch down in those supercell storms. So again, this is kind of like your tornado juice here if we see a lot of rich dew points and instability in the area. It doesn't matter how much of this that we see if we don't have any instability, but if we do see that instability and the 
enrich dew points in the atmosphere, and you add dew point or you add low level winds like this on the screen, that is definitely going to be favorable for tornadoes. Eastern Oklahoma and eastern Kansas are the biggest regions to say about this so far. And right now, a lot of the storms are west of the substantial low level winds here and more in a better environment for the mid level winds. But these will enter that low level jet the further that they get into the afternoon and evening and definitely have the potential to become significant tornado producers. Taking this every couple of hours, we could see a substantial squall line forming as we get towards about the 10 p.m. hour tomorrow night uh, across central Oklahoma, including Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, you're definitely likely to get some severe weather out of this. To the northeast, we can see some broken up areas of storms here. And this storm here in northeastern Oklahoma, I would kind of be concerned about because they, it is entering this area a very favorable low-level winds combined with inc with instability that we're still seeing in this area. Instability is not going to be a problem tomorrow across central Oklahoma. And another thing, too, is that a lot of the recent severe weather events that we've seen across Tornado Alley have included something called a cap inversion or a cap along and out ahead of the dry line. What the cap basically is, is the inability for the air parcels in the lower levels of the atmosphere to rise to the surface. You need to see that convective process happening in order to get thunderstorms developing. So if you have a thick cap in the area, if you have a strong cap in the area out ahead of the dry line or what, uh, it's going to be very tough to see thunderstorms developing, which has made the past several events across the more southern regions affected by the severe weather so isolated because the, it, the cap was just simply too strong to get a lot of thunderstorms developing. That's probably not going to be a problem tomorrow. I don't think we're going to have any problem with storm initiation across northern Oklahoma and then into Kansas for tomorrow and then even into central and southern Oklahoma into north Texas for later on in the evening and overnight hours. So the cap is likely not going to hold these storms back tomorrow and when you add the low level jet that we have and the rich instability, tomorrow is setting up to be a pretty dangerous day. That squall will move southeastward as we get towards the midnight hour, and then by 2 a.m. you can really see a lot of this activity breaking up and weakening as it gets closer to the Red River. North Texas, if you do live in that area, I don't expect much severe weather for you. I think that once this does get to North Texas, it's going to crumple significantly. And right now the model, th this one here, does not appear to be showing much of any development prior to this closer to the Red River. The activity is going to drop off significantly until you get into the overnight hours. So I don't expect much severe weather there, but I do expect it across Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. In terms of, or in addition to severe weather, another thing that's going to be possible tomorrow is going to be flash flooding, especially where that squall line is going to be developing here across Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and then even stretching into southern Iowa and west central Illinois. Illinois as well. We have a flash flooding threat more significant than today's is going to be as well. The tornado threat tomorrow is also likely going to be more significant than it will be today across West Texas. So we definitely need to take this seriously. Now I'm not going to get into much detail with this next event because I like to take it storm by storm when we're still a few days away, but I do figure that I do have to show this to you guys. The Storm Prediction Center has already issued concerning risks of severe weather for Wednesday, for especially Wednesday and then also Thursday as well for to the east. So it's not very common for them to see a 30% area get issued across north central Texas and into central Oklahoma. But we do have this issued uh, across the Red River, close to, or, uh, including Oklahoma City, and then northeastward towards the Tulsa area. We have severe storms likely for Wednesday and Wednesday night. Uh, again, not common really to see this 30% area get issued. At this time, this would be equivalent to an enhanced risk, but this will get stretched and fluctuated a little bit. Even the DFW area, uh, northward towards the Wichita area, have the possibility to get some severe storms again on Wednesday. So Tornado Alley wakes up yet again after waking up previously for Wednesday. And then for Thursday, that threat of scattered severe weather slides eastward from the DFW area northward into eastern Missouri and southwestern Illinois. Again, another threat of severe weather going to be possible from DFW through Little Rock and into western Kentucky that we do need to watch for. So, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to the channel and also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. But until the next video or live stream, stay safe and I'll talk to you guys back here next time.